The society into which I was born was an agrarian and peaceful society. There was peace because under the Pax Britannica, there was a total ban on intertribal as well as intratribal war, and civil disturbances of any kind and degree were severely suppressed and ruthlessly punished. There was peace because there was an unquestioning obedience to constituted authority. There was peace because the people lived very close to nature, and she, in her turn, was kind and extremely generous to them. And there was peace because the family life was corporate, integrated, and well-regulated. The order of precedence in the family and in the community as a whole was essentially in accordance with age. The little ones were given every legitimate indulgence. The parents, grandparents, and more often than not, the great-grandparents were all there, living in one and the same compound, sometimes under one and the same roof. Discipline, when occasion called for its application, was severe and spartan. The sturdy members of the family were also there to cater for the aged parents or grandparents as the case might be. The land was fertile and the rains fell in their due season. At that time, there was more than enough land for everybody. Land was and still is owned not by the individual but by the family. This is the custom in Ijibu as well as in other parts of Yoruba land. Every member of the family is entitled to cultivate any portion of his family land either on the paternal or maternal side. Because of the fertility and sufficiency of farmland, only a minimum amount of effort was required to satisfy the sparse wants of the individual. Until Western civilization began to make its inroad into the lives of the people, it did not require too much exertion to provide food, shelter, and clothing. Food was obtained with the minimum effort from the farms. Shelter was easily provided by erecting mud walls and covering them with thatch or certain kinds of leaves for a roof. Friends and relatives usually helped one another in building one another's houses in turn. It was one of the obligatory duties of a son-in-law to help build the house of his father-in-law and annually to help repair the roof thereof. The amount of clothing required was limited to the demands of a peasant farming life and of the annual festivities. There were many annual festivals, all of which were and still are held during the period of harvest. There was plenty of leisure.